all oh, around. Go, I, I, didn't, I didn't. I said all around. You go outside. Anthony, da- Anthony Davis can make every shot Tim Duncan can make inside the arc, but Anthony Davis can also step out and hit the three better. That's than true. Tim That's true. Okay, so he got. Now tuned into the greatest. The, the, the Run, the, the Vanny Wilson Podcast. The best sports podcast there is. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson, all the way from Detroit to Chicago to your speakers and headphones. But we're not stopping there today, man. We going all the way out the country to Coastal for the former South Suburban Blue Player of the Year. Four seasons overseas and counting. And he's currently playing in Kosovo for KB Peha. Is that's how you say it, right? KB Peha. Yeah. 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 Hey, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we here, man, with Taylor Adway joining us on the best sports podcast there is. What's going on with you today, man? What's going on? How you feeling? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm doing all right. Glad to have you here, man. So, hey, I, I'm ready to get to it, cause, cause, man, you. You you had me you had me a little razzle dazzle when we was talking earlier, man. I I don't know, I I don't know. So the the, the thing you brought up here, and I I'll just say it to to fill everybody in. So the thing you brought up here was that I, I'll let you say it actually. I'll let you say because I can't I can't we talking, put. We talking about we talking about Tim and, and and AD. Yes, sir. You already know it. Yeah, man. So this is my Let's thing. Hear it. I understand that Tim Duncan is the greater talent he's the greater player of the two but Mm -hmm. when i say anthony davis is better than tim duncan i am speaking about skill set okay anthony davis okay okay, let's go we just go back and forth (laughs) real quick and and you just tell me you just tell me who's better at what okay who's a better who's a better finisher in the post in your opinion tim duncan easy tim duncan Tim Duncan. Easy. Yeah, I'm asking number two. Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan. Okay. Who's a better athlete? Anthony Davis. Uh, <laughs> Anthony Davis. I, I don't want to give it to you. I don't want to. I, I don't know, okay. man. Uh, just because he can dribble a little bit, it don't mean he's. he's... No, I'm saying athlete, athlete, jumping, quickness. Bro, just Timmy, pure athleticism. I was when he was younger, though. Timmy could get up. Timmy. Bro, he, he was, was never AD. Though. Oh my god! Yeah, he was not AD, but he could run. He still had the footwork to keep up. I'm going. But this t- is the thing. I'm going. This t- is the thing. Tim, when the era Tim Duncan played in, Tim Duncan didn't play in the era for the athletic bigs. So yes, Tim Duncan looked athletic around his counterparts, but now Anthony Davis plays in a league full of athletic bigs. And if you go through yeah. the league. Anthony Davis is definitely top three athlete as far as somebody 6'10 and above. He's top yeah. three. You got him, him, Giannis. You got him. He's in the same conversation with Giannis when we talk about athleticism. And we know Tim Duncan is not close to Giannis in athleticism. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's all a right. better shooter? Who's a better all around shooter? Well, inside the arc, Tim Duncan. I but, said all oh, around. Go, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I said all around. You go outside. Anthony, da- Anthony Davis can make every shot Tim Duncan can make inside the arc. But Anthony Davis can also step out and hit the three better That's than true. Tim That's true. Okay, so he got two. Th- uh, I'll give you at max. Three things at max. It's, it's three things because the athleticism, I, I guess I'll give you that. That's a great point, though. You brought that up. I'll give you the athleticism. Um, stepping out a little bit further, being able to shoot. And the ball handle, obviously. And uh, as a defender, around the rim, I can say they watch each other out. But on the nah, perimeter, Tim. Tim Duncan didn't move his feet better than Anthony Davis. On the perimeter, switching off on That's the That's true. Ball, okay, I can give you that. No I sir. can give you that. That's I can give you that. So look. Inside the paint, I will say Tim Duncan, is a, he may be a little bit better as far as protecting the rim than Anthony Davis, but it's not a far-off gap. But as far as stepping on the perimeter and switching on to somebody that can handle the mm. ball, Anthony Davis is a much better perimeter defender, and that's my only argument. That's, that's I, I can you give act- you that. Look, I can see. I can give you that. I can give you that. But here, here's here's why I say it. I can't give you the the AD over Timmy D. And you kind of already said it that Timmy D is the better player, but AD yes. just has more skill. And I'll yes. give you that only because 
a basic evolution in the game of basketball. That's just how it goes. Like it is, it's the same thing when people compare Mike and um and, and Jordan. It's like or Mike and Jordan, uh, Mike and LeBron. <laughs> when people LeBron. compare Mike and LeBron, it's like okay, well, obviously everything LeBron, uh, he does a little more than than what Jordan was asked to do. But because the game is going to continue to evolve, what Jordan exactly. did at his time is is a little less than what people are doing now because they have more basketball. They have more experience with basketball. They have more to see. That's why people be clowning being like, oh, with DeRozan, like he would have been Michael Jordan back then. Or they be like, they, when they be, people be saying that, that, that stuff like that. But I mean, I, I, I give you that, but 5v5, are you taking Timmy D or Anthony Davis? I'm taking Tim. And that's what I'm saying. Okay. I understand right. Tim is a great, I understand I'll completely take- Tim's a greater player. I understand that completely. All right. All he's right. a he's a greater player. I'm simply saying, as far as skill, I believe Anthony Davis is a mesh of a Kevin Garnett, Tim Duncan, and yeah. I don't want to say dirt because he's not that level of a shooter, but nah, he, nah, he's nah, a nah, mixture nah. of he's a, yeah, but he's a mixture of those three like bits and pieces as far as everything he can do as far as being talented. But I can, I can give you yeah, that. Yeah, Tim is Tim is Tim is probably Kevin Garnett is my Kevin Garnett is my all time favorite power forward. But Tim is probably the great. He's definitely the most. He's definitely achieved yeah. the most. He probably will go down as the great. I really, I, I personally, I personally, I really got, um, I really got, uh, Timmy D, or I really got KG over Tim Duncan. In, in my personal favorite of like all time guys, yeah. I personally have Timmy D over or KG over Timmy D. But also again, yeah. too, that position was played slightly different. That position was played different now then or that position was played different then than what it is now if that makes sense that and i think we you, you mentioned that too because now it's it's we we had a point where it's positionless basketball now but then it was pretty much like uh you know you play this specific position you stepping out to shoot a three if you don't make it you you know you know where you're going if you don't make it back then like that was the kind of thing with you were four and five and you shooting three so i don't know I, i'll give you it though i'll give you that so skill, skill, AD in terms of skill, but obviously Tim for the greater player. I can give you that. Yeah. I can live yeah. with that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. can live with that. All right. All right. All right. But look, man, you ain't off the hook yet. You ain't off the hook yet. Uh, <laughs> right, you got to punch a ticket before we can continue on with the show, man. So the ticket is, is going to allow you to be able to keep going and, and allow this episode to continue on. So you got to give me your dream starting five, including yourself. Uh, dream starting five. Yep, let's hear it. Okay. I got Braun at the point. Mm. I mm. got... Uh, I got Braun at the point. Mm, yeah, it. this is a, this one tough right here. It's a couple different options you can go. I got Bron at the point. I'm gonna do all current players too. Bron at the point. Yep. Steph at the two. Katie at the three. Mm. Me at the four. Giannis at the five. Oh damn! Oh, <laughs> hold on one more time. Give it to us one more time. I need. I got Bron at, at the point. At the one. I'm gonna play Steph at the two. Steph playing the two. I'm gonna throw Katie at the three. I'm gonna put me at the four, and I got Giannis at the five. Giannis at the five. Damn, so you trying to run people off the court, huh? Run, you try- running off the court, you try- we switching everything. <laughs> you try- we gonna, we flying, we flying around. You flying see, around. I see you. At, okay, okay. I like it though. I give you that. I give you that. That's valid. That's valid. That's valid. And everybody unselfish. We all gonna mesh together. We gonna be. We gonna be straight. Yeah, you know, and then you got to think, you clear that lane out for Giannis. It's a wrap. Who you who are you gonna help off of? Because I'm sitting in the corner, I'm knocking it down. One through five, I can Steph push. And, I got Steph and KD on the wing. Mm. I put Bron in other corner, Bron wherever. Giannis coming downhill, you can't guard it. The moment you help off, somebody hitting three. So we, it's a wrap. Good. Yeah, especially with Giannis starting to shoot now. That okay? You know what we gonna do? We gonna so we're gonna hold that line up right there. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that lineup and I'm gonna see who can put together a five that can beat that lineup. Okay. Out, of, out of the listeners and out of myself, honestly, just for the just for the hell of it, bro. Truthfully, uh, but I, I think that's gonna be dope. But that's that's a valid ticket. I get that valid ticket. I like it. I like it. 
All right, so let's jump into it, man. So recently, man, the, the Cavs, they traded for Donovan Mitchell. Uh, and they got Donovan Mitchell, but the, they also had to give up. Uh, they gave up Sexton. They gave up Lloyd Marketing. And they gave up three first-round draft picks and two uh, swaps. So who won this exactly. trade off the back? Now, I personally been saying this is a this is a solid trade. It's kind of even for both parties. But obviously, uh, they want to get Donovan Mitchell to resign. I think it's a little bit overhyped. I don't think they're this, the Cavs are gonna be that dominant force in the East off of this one trade. They obviously better getting Donovan Mitchell, but they still have a long way to go in terms of, of being that that dominant threat in the East. And about time they get there to be that that legit threat. It's going to be time for Donovan Mitchell to decide if he want to leave or if he want to resign. So what's your thoughts on this entire trade? Um, I like the trade for Cleveland. I feel like it does. It puts them in a, a – um, I feel like they was going to be in a valid fighting position to make the playoffs without the playing this year. Mm. I mean, it was going to come – I mean, it always comes down to injury. I just feel like Darius Garland yeah. is, making, is making a big jump. And I feel like uh, Evan Mobley is continuing to grow. I feel like somebody mm-hmm. like Donovan Mitchell that who's already coming to his own mm-hmm. is going to give all of them that that veteran leadership, that playoff experience. It's just going to it's going to take pre- it takes pressure off um off Darius Garland and it makes Facts. it makes uh Jared Allen's job easier. It makes um Evan Mobley's job easier. I, so I definitely Levert like what, too. what the Cavs did now. Um, I was actually going, we was actually talking about this yesterday, me and my um, my other American teammates, we were talking about, you know, could Cleveland have a chance at being a top six seed in the East? And after we broke it down, hell no, nah. it's going to be, t- it's going to be really tough. Like they got to have, they can't have no injuries. They got to have a perfect season. I ain't but I do think, I definitely believe the East is going to be better now in terms of Utah. I think Utah is in, a, of course, they're in a complete rebuild. Um, they got Colin Sexton, which is probably the biggest name, but they got Colin 15 first round picks. They got 15 yeah. first round picks in the next seven drafts. Exactly. And they that's older. great, which is, you know, now they got that's trade capital with they, but I don't see no superstar one to come to Utah. But I mean, yeah. as a possible trade capital, you, like you said, 15 picks. You can and, build a team. The way they team set up, the way they team set up, at them 15, 10 of them will probably be in the lottery. Bro, they have enough room. <laughs> that and I'm saying, yeah, from the like, so they may even get more, like a higher pick. So my my thing is too, they got the, the the 15 picks. You have enough room in the next seven drafts. You have enough room to fuck up four times straight and still be all right and like think wishfully, like all right, we got next year. We got like you have so much leverage in terms of building this team. If I don't know if, if Danny Age can't put together a solid team in this next decade to be good, damn, that's a long time. But for the next, for the, <laughs> for, for after that, like it, it's a problem. It's a problem. But you have so much leverage with that team. So I, I don't know, man. It, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. I don't think the Cavs are really gonna be top six seed though. That's that's very unlikely in my eyes. Yeah, I feel like it's the East is so so tough. Because Boston got better, mm-hmm. Miami's just gonna always be there. Yep, if Chicago's healthy. They're gonna be. They're gonna. They're gonna be in the same. I feel like Milwaukee. Chicago, Cleveland, and like the Hawks. I feel like they're gonna all be in the same boat where like they're really good teams, mm-hmm. but I don't. They're not that next level of teams that are already in the East. So. Right. Because Milwaukee gonna still be there. Yep. Philly gonna be there, regardless of yep. all this stuff going on with Brooklyn. I they think gonna Brooklyn's be there. gonna be there. They gonna be there. Absolutely. So, it, I'm, so it's gonna it's gonna like everything gotta happen perfect for like Cleveland, Atlanta, and Chicago, and they're gonna need some luck from these other teams. And as far as Utah, I feel like they need. It's like it's either the front office and the coach, and I feel like that's what their problem is because they've had. I mean, they, they it's been proven they could be great in the regular season. They can. But they just haven't been able to get over that hump for some reason. Yeah, they're in rebuild mode right now. It's officially rebuild mode for oh, yeah, Utah for sure. right now. So I, they about to be on the back burner for a minute in the Western Conference. And the West is stacked too. So it's, it's going to be definitely That's tough. Definitely but we're going to touch on some more, man. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to jump into some more topics. Uh, but anyway, just stay tuned, and we will be right back. Now 
are tuned into the greatest. The Run. The Lenny Wilson Podcast. The Run. The Lenny Wilson Podcast. Podcast. The best sports podcast there is. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson. I'm still here kicking it with my guest, Taylor Adway. Four seasons overseas and counting, currently playing in Kosovo. But anyway, man, he's here. He's he's kind of got me a little bit on the Tim Duncan argument earlier in AD. So I, I guess I'd give him a pass. So we, we he know what he's talking about. He know what he's talking about here. But we got some more of the topics to jump into, man. Look. Now, I, I, you, we done talked about Anthony Davis. We talked about the Cavs. Um, I know you like the Bulls, and I know you like the Lakers. Or you like Anthony Davis. I put it that way. Not, not necessarily the Lakers, but man, with the I'm Bulls. I'm a Lakers fan. Baby. I ain't no Lakers fan either, man. I, I, I'm at a crossing ground with the Lakers. It's so weird because I, <laughs> I loved Kobe. But I just, man, the Lakers is just weird. It's just so weird. Uh, but anyway, speaking of the Lakers, man, now, it's been a lot of drama with the Russell Westbrook. So I, I, will, I, I have to hear. I have to hear because – Personally, I absolutely see no way that this this will work with Russell Westbrook. It's, it's literally no way in hell you can play with a player who who's not trying to elevate his team. When you play with guys who who are are well talent and, and who have great talent, you got to be able to understand the talent of your teammates, and you can't just be kind of keeping that. Oh, I'm the best attitude. Fuck it, they gonna have to adjust type of type of play style. When you got LeBron, you got all these other animals on your team, and to me. Westbrook is not going to let that go. And I have never seen him let that go since OKC, Houston, uh, Washington, and now in L.A. So I don't see it working out at all. But let's hear your <laughs> thoughts on that. Let's hear it. <laughs> Man, now, I'm not going to lie. I, don't, I do not like the combination of LeBron, Russ, and AD. At least not this LeBron. I don't feel like this is the... If this would have been like Miami Brown, because he can do more, he can carry the team more. I feel yeah. like he, I would feel like that Brown would have been able to make it work a little better. Yep. But I do feel that the Lakers are going to be, they're definitely going to make the play. They're going to be a top AC. I, I definitely feel like they're going to be a top AC. Nah, and possibly. And possibly. again, this is a public service announcement. This is all pending on health. Health is always AD a fact. Get, if AD get hurt, Brian get hurt, don't don't be yeah, snipping this <laughs> podcast, posting it, talking about some, what happened to them. No, this is right, right. Tricky. If they, if they're healthy, Lakers are going to be a top AC for sure. But I feel like they're going to figure it out this year. I feel like mm -hmm. I just feel like they're going to figure it out this year. I feel like Brian. Yes, he's <laughs> older, but I just it's just something about when Brian missed the playoffs that next year. Ron always comes back better. Now, is that a fact or is that just something? I, I don't know, man. Because you know, Brian, he was. How many times have How many times have Brian missed the playoffs in his career? Well, like three times. The last year he two, missed I it. Think, last year he last missed year, it. He activated playoff he mode two. and missed it. Uh, <laughs> and then and, right before they won the championship, was the that, Lakers, that that was Brian's first year? They didn't make it. So that was three. And exactly, but but what I'm saying is, if we he missed it, came back, won a championship. He, and then that's the bubble though, man. That's the bubble. And and it's the Come bubble. But it's, when you bring Bron name up, when we the when bubble? we bring Bron name up, we're gonna say four he got four rings. So we gonna count it. I, I mean, yeah, he got four because he he did win. So like whatever. He won. But we gonna we can't be sitting here counting the bubble season as an intensive season. Like, come on. Like Think, you know, bro. You, I heard them overseas crowds is crazy. So you know how hey, you know how much a crowd can impact the game. Like you, of hey, all people, know it's, it's two sides to that because yes, a crowd impacts the game, but no crowd is tough to play with too because you got to think they're in that bubble for all these days. Now, granted, it wasn't how some Man. of the bubbles that people outside the NBA dealt with. They was they was a very, very nice bubble. But it you're seeing the same people every day and no fans, you don't have that energy to feed off of. So now you got to think, you in this isolated place for all this time, you, you get eating the same food, you can't go outside, you can't see different people. Yeah. It's hard to get families in there. No fans to give you that energy. It's hard to, even for the professionals, it's, it's basketball hard to find kid. that energy. <laughs> 
It's a, it, using them to, it's like, a it's, basketball it's camp. It's a pickup game of basketball camp at NBA camp camp professionals. That's all that was. That was a, a professional basketball camp for them players to scrimmage all damn day. That's all it was. Not, I swear. I don't think. I don't think that. I definitely don't think it was as hard <laughs> as a championship as LeBron would try to make it sound. But Man, again, facts. I'm, I wasn't there. But I will say, I do understand the effect that a crowd plays on the game. A crowd give even when they're booing you, a crowd gives you energy. Yeah, a facts. crowd can. It can they hype you or up. Cheering, they give you in. So nobody there, no noise. You only hear your shoes squeaking <laughs> and your voices in the <laughs> coaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's gonna that's gonna play a that that factors in as well. But I don't think that the that I don't I don't count the bubble that bubble ring. I don't count it for nobody because players were playing out of their mind in that bubble. They yeah, came yeah. back that next season. And completely disappeared. I'm saying, was it my man's from uh, Indiana? Was it TJ Warren? And it was, was it TJ Warren? TJ Warren. Yeah, TJ Warren. looking like prime. But TJ Mike. Warren got hurt. TJ Warren got hurt, and he missed that next year. But you do got Jeez. people like Donovan Mitchell. You do got people like Anthony Davis. Yeah, you do got that's people true. that was in that bubble going crazy. Mm-hmm. That's and came out that next season and laid an egg. That's so true. But if that's... we get if we get back to the Lakers, all I'm saying is, Brian is going to come back healthier. I believe I'm mm. not. I'm not predicting championship. I, they're probably going to be Hell a first round no. elimination, depending on where they fall at. But I definitely think the Lakers are going to make the playoffs this year, and I definitely think the Lakers are going to be a much better team this year than they were last year. I don't think. I Bro, think Russ. I think they're going to figure it out. But I don't. I just don't it think their team is built good enough to compete for a championship, even Bro, with LeBron, unless AD. Is a top three player in the league. If, if AD Anthony Davis is a top three player, the in only the league, way the Lakers, the Lakers going to the Western Conference Finals. That's the only way I can give you that. If Anthony Davis come out playing like he wants to win an MVP, then we may see something from the Lakers. But it, bro, you can't you can't win with Russell Westbrook. And let me let me ask you this: So he played it like he played in uh, OKC, got Paul George, nothing. Um, did not the offense ain't look really good or nothing. Same thing for the rest of the teams he played with ever since then. As a player, from a, as a player, and this is a question: as a player, from you, if 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 you're playing with a point guard that's gonna try and make sure he get his before he give anybody else theirs, I know mm-hmm. that shit is annoying. I know it's annoying. But for me, the kind of player that I am, like I model my game after uh, like Anthony Davis, or Kevin Garnett, these mm-hmm. kind of four men who were a part of the offense. So right, playing okay. with a point guard like that, he's not really trying to let you go to work because he's trying to do everything. Yes. If I'm a Steven Adams, I love Russell Westbrook. That's true. Because okay. Steven Adams don't need the ball. That's Steven true. Steven Adams don't care about Scoring, stats. His, none of that his stuff. contracts aren't based on stats. He doesn't need any of that. He don't care about none of that stuff. So if I'm Steven Adams, I love Russell. But if I'm Anthony Davis. you like, bro, you got to let me work. Yeah. Bro, you got to let me work. What? And that's, that's and just this, it. And this is my thing. I believe, I believe that they're going to figure it out to where they find a role that is conducive to Russell. I don't know. It's going to be hard. It's going to be. He don't know. Be he don't know a role, bro. Be I, I, I just, I, I just, because I, bro, I kid you not. I've been thinking about this literally the entire summer trying to like make segments and stuff. And I, I recorded my last episode. I was talking about this. But I just find it very difficult to believe that from the time he's been at OKC and all the other different coaches he's played with, I find it very difficult that not one of them has told him, Russ, you have to play a particular role. Like, we need you to play just this one specific role in order for the team to be good. And I, I just know, I just know Darvin Ham is going to tell him a similar thing. Like, we all have roles and you have to stick to your role. But it's just the fact that is he going to be the one to actually finally get to Russell Westbrook to to understand the importance of playing a role? Like, literally, the reason the Warriors look so good is because everybody has a distinct role and they all play their role. The Milwaukee, when Milwaukee won that championship, everybody got a role. Like, it's, it's common for a basketball team and, I mean, damn near any sports team for everybody to play their role in order for the team to win. So when you got a guy who's like... 
to hell with the roll. I'm trying to ball like and just don't have no flip in yeah. the switch. Like it's gonna is I, I don't see I don't see it happening. But I mean I, I get it though. I get it. I mean it's wishful thinking. I would love for to to see him, you know, decide and fall into a role, but I, I don't know, man. I, I don't see that the, happening with Russ. The thing the thing with Russ though, where he's different than those other teams. Russ has always, if you if you talking about Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Russ came into his own. Russ was the honest. When you talk about Golden State, Russ was a solo was, player. He's so a solo player. You you taking you're taking somebody who's been in a superstar role, and now you're putting him as the number three guy. I mean, somebody so, got to take the back seat role on when the talent and, is and high. That's, and that's that's and that's I agree with that, but I feel like it's gonna it's gonna take that's gonna take a strong minded coach. That's willing to go go blow for blow with Russ, bump heads with Russ, but mm-hmm. it's also going to take Russ time to understand that adjustment because you got to think basketball is muscle memory. Fact. Basketball is muscle memory. So Russ has been playing a certain way his entire life. That is true. So even even if even true. if in his mind he wants to play this different role, when he gets out on that court, he's not thinking. Right. Russ is just going back to what he naturally does. Just reacting. And I and I feel like his biggest problem this year was Russ was trying to think and play that role. And that's why you've seen mm. some of the shots he shot. That's why okay. you've seen some of the things he did. Because basketball is not a game where you can think. Basketball is a game react. where you have to react. Yep. And once they made Russell Westbrook think, then it became a problem where it's like, where it's like, um, he's, now he's Russell trying to with over, his natural. overthink. And yep. Exactly. He's not, he not feeling the game no more mm. because not necessarily, I don't think he's looking over his shoulder because he makes too much money. He know he's going to be out there. Right, but right. Mm. he not, he not just playing to play. I, that's why I feel like now this year, mm. he having another year with these players. He got a more strong minded coach. I feel like this year they're gonna sketch out a plan. Darvin Hammond already been in an interview saying I'm gonna give him a role. He's already right. been made that clear. I, I he he wants Russ too. to be Russ, but within the role he gives him. But I think now this year, another year under this under this Lakers system and the position he's gonna be in, I feel like that's why I feel like the Lakers are gonna be better because Russ is gonna be more muscle memory to do this new thing now versus mm naturally going back to what he's always been doing right right no that's that's facts man I, I i haven't heard it broken down that way i haven't even thought of it that way actually so that that gives me a new perspective on it that's i i like that one i like that i give you that and, and i think that's probably exactly what it is too just of, of him probably trying to combat what he's used to but also too thinking too much when you out there and then you exactly. get, and then you know it don't help when your own fans is booing you when you got yeah, they the Westbrook Westbrook West, and all that crazy man. stuff. Yeah, it's, so. it's just a lot. Then you bring his family into it. It's a it's just a lot of stuff he's dealing with. That is, and you true. can tell in his game because you look at man, you look at some of the shots he's shooting at his brand. If you look at him, he's shooting the same he shots. Pull his up whole that bank shot. That bank shot is nothing. Now he's shooting it at the top of the backboard. Yeah. It's just that's true. It's, that's what I'm saying. It's more. It's more to it. It's deeper. And that's when I'm looking at it, I'm like, man, Russ was just a dog two years ago. Yeah, MVP. He ain't dealt with, and it and, and, and ain't been no injuries. He dealt with his injuries, came back, was still a dog. But since he, it, it ain't been no injuries and none of that, it's, that's why I feel like it's, Russ is trying to, he's trying to make up for, he's trying to uh, compensate for what people want, but his natural instinct is to do what he's always done. And that's what mm-hmm. he's, that's why I feel like the, the collision is coming in, and that's why I feel like he's having some problems. That's facts. I, I man, I, I 100% agree, actually, man, because I, I, I haven't thought of it that way, but that does make perfect sense. And and I can I can relate to that. I know how it can be when you're trying to already break a habit that's been there. And like you said, muscle memory. When you're trying to break that muscle memory of, of what you've been doing literally your entire career, uh, so I, I get that. And then, too, the shots that he was shooting with the Lakers, it, it was never it, – he, some of them. It, but most of them was never really bad shots. Like, it was mostly – It was like Russell the, Westbrook's shot. Yeah, the stop, pull up in the midi, that's his shot. Bank shots, that's the type of shots he, he would always knock down. 
on these other teams, OKC, uh, Houston, Washington. Like, those are, are shots he would make. It's just that part of, like you said, I think he just thinking about it too much. Um, and then from there, you kind of just get restricted. You kind of you start fucking up. <laughs> you start start fucking up because you're not reacting. So, I don't know. That's dope, though. Mm-hmm. Um, but look, man, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to switch gears, man. I got some personal questions to ask you about your experience and in, in the game. So we're going to take a quick break and then we will be right back. Now tuned into the greatest. The Run with Lanny Wilson Podcast. The, the Run with Lanny Wilson Podcast. The best sports podcast What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson. I'm still here with my special guest from overseas, Taylor Adway. Four seasons overseas and counting, currently playing in Kosovo. So what's up, man? Look, I, I done heard some crazy uh, pregame rituals that, that people do uh, uh, from from multiple sports that I played when I was in high school and stuff like that, man. Uh, it was guys, people, they smoke, smoke weed. Uh, it was they drink, I, which I never understood. Uh, but what's the craziest <laughs> pregame ritual that that you witnessed or that you participated in? <laughs> uh, well, my pregame ritual is um, pretty pretty simple. I really the biggest thing I do that's most consistent is I pray before games. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't do nothing. It's not a certain thing I eat. It's not a certain amount of, certain amount of time I sleep anything like that as far right. as people i play with i really don't pay attention because <laughs> like while i'm in the game i really just be focusing on getting my shots up and getting a good sweat so i can try to get i, I like to get my second win before the game starts so I, right. I don't when i get out there i'm not you know that first win you might be get tired quick i try to get that one out the way so i really don't right. pay attention but i've had her i know people that you know, the smoking thing kind of was a shock to me, you know, some years ago. But, you know, smoking has just become so normal that it's, it doesn't mm-hmm. surprise me anymore when I hear people say, oh, I, I, I'm, I played in last game. Last game I played, I was hot. I, so yeah, I, don't, I never understood me. it. I never understood I mean, it. I know, I'm not going to lie to you. I know some people that play better hot. Like, I know me some too. They don't, when they're not hot, <laughs> they don't play as good. So. Me too. I done had to ask somebody, like, hey. You, like, what kind of game you bring in today, bro? Yeah. Like, like, did you, you, you do your thing? You like, need a quick break? You need yeah. A quick break. Before I pick you up on my team, we finna run all day. Like, what, what was you on before? Like, come on. But I don't, the drinking, I don't, I don't know nobody that, like, intentionally drinks. I know people that, now, I, I know people that have, uh, you know, practiced or played, um, you know, after, in college, we would go out and coach would, Coach would know, like, if it was, like, Halloween. Like, my coaching at Toledo, mm-hmm. on certain on certain holidays, like, we wouldn't, like, we would have, like, some light in the morning, but then we'd have our real practice at night at, like, 12 o'clock, mm. 11 o'clock, because right. he didn't want us going. He didn't want us going out on these, on like, these Halloween days. or <laughs> something. Yeah, he didn't want us going out on the day. Right. But, you know, you... You go out on a Friday night, got practice Saturday morning, or you go out on a well, maybe it's really Thursday night in college practice. Yeah, yeah, practice yeah on a Friday Thursdays. morning. Look, you might you feel me be a little hungover, and you um you may practice better because you so focused on locking in to not look like you hungover that right. you have a good practice. <laughs> but that as far as like, but as far as like a ritual for a game, I really don't know nothing crazy. Like I said, I really just be like tunnel vision almost, especially since I got to the That's pro good, level. That's good, though. Because every, every year, everything is about just trying to elevate to that next level, and you don't, you never know, you know, which game a coach is going to watch or, you know, somebody's going who's going to be in the audience. So yeah. I just try to zone in for real so I don't really pay attention to, like, other rituals. No, nah, that's that's solid. That's good. I, f- I don't know. I feel like uh, also, too, with basketball, it's, it's, it's less – well, I ain't going to say less common, but with football, it's more people. So that's probably why certain stuff seemed more like uh, when I did play, it was guys. I ain't throwing no names out there. I ain't throwing nothing, but they was great players, bro. Like, <laughs> like star players on the team that was like 
lighting up before games, taking shots. <laughs> it was like, dog, like y'all, y'all crazy, man. And so, but yeah, I, I don't know. They were always they they still play good, but they was good without that stuff too. But it was just like, I yeah, mean, they was different. Yeah, they just different. So I'd be like, I don't know. And then even too more more like as time went on and, and like professional level, um, I know Randy Moss. He mentioned. Uh, him and his boys would used to smoke like a pound of weed before games when he was in high school. Marshawn Lynch I said, it. "Yeah, I, I'm like that's crazy." Marshawn Lynch, he said, uh, he used to take a shot before a shot a hen dog at, before every game in the pros. I'm like, and this is crazy. I'm like, liquor, man. Like, I can't imagine you running and like all that with the like, man. That's just crazy. But I don't know. But anyway, man, what did you have a? Did you ever have a moment where it was like a, a welcome to the pros moment where it's like, oh man, like like damn, I gotta get better. Like they giving it to me right now. Um. Uh, I can't think of a moment in an actual game, but you know man, when you I go home. Practice. I, Play and um, when I go home, I play in pro am. So all the New Chicago has a lot of professional athletes. Yeah. And so like my my first year out of college, uh, 2019 is when I graduated. Mm-hmm. So that summer, I'm getting ready for my rookie year. And so now, you know, I've been. I mean, I've played in pro. I come back and play in pro ams and pro runs. You know, every summer I come home in college, but now. This is the first summer where I'm home the entire summer because in college right. you got to go back to camp, summer school, training. Right, right. Excuse me. You got to go back for all that. But now I'm home until I get ready to leave. So I'm home every day working out. And so I'm just playing with pros constantly. So, you know, you know, and this, before I even actually had to guard uh, Jabari Parker, I'm watching him. Yeah. You know, he, his, he's playing before I get on the court. But then, so I'm seeing – just how easy he makes the game look. Man. And I'm looking at him and I'm he's like, like that. That that's a pro. It's not even that I'm saying he's like that. It's just I could tell the you I could see the difference between because he's going against other NBA players and um overseas players. And I'm looking at him and I'm saying, Oh, I can see why he was number two pick. I see why right. he went to do. I see yeah. like you can see the difference. He was at the uh, so Dreamville then, run. Recently, he he's still me in the yeah, programs he, and stuff. He's doing yeah. a lot. Dreamville, um, it's a new it's a new program coming up out of Chicago. Uh, Denard Bros. Denard Bros. Yeah, yeah. Denard Bros. I he will be I at, did that all summer. I did that all summer. And, um, that's that's really starting to take off. Yeah, man. I but, I, I didn't even know they was doing it all summer. I went to the uh, to the championship game, but like I had just heard about it. I didn't even know they was doing it the yeah. whole summer, man. Yeah, they been they did it. I think it was a total of five or six weeks. Uh, they did it once a week, uh, invite mm-hmm. 20 players out, four yeah. teams, everybody guaranteed to play each other once, yep. and then they do a, a single game elimination. Um, and it, I, I was at, I was at everyone up until I left. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was at like the first four, three or four, something like that. And it got bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, the pros would come out, but as far nice. as like the crowd, to the point where it just grew more and more. Thanks. It became more of a thing where the city was coming out. So I definitely think the NAR Bros run is going to take off. Hey, man, we got to get them up here. So, yeah, Eddie and Aubrey, you definitely <laughs> Yeah, Eddie, gotta, yeah, we chopped it up Eddie with them a little bit. We got we got to lock in a date and get them up here, man. <laughs> sure. They um they Shout doing big things for the city, which is it's great. Um, The Madison Program, which is now called, for whatever reason, it's called uh, Pro Chicago. Um, That's a decent – it's another program – Mm-hmm. It started kind of late this year, um, but the pros still come out to that. Um, fans come out. It's it's competitive. Mm-hmm. It's not, you know, just like anybody just out there. It's competitive. People, they compete every week. Um, I didn't play in that this year because I left. The team I was supposed to play with lost in the championship game. Uh, mm-hmm. um, they lost the championship game to the Gorillas. Um, mm-hmm. But um, my, my Chicago basketball scene was kind of my – you know, my, my wake up moment because, you know, you playing against people who now do this for a living, they right. do this to, to protect. So they coming out. They coming for you you know, to Yeah, they coming out to kill. So yep. that was, I mean, just from, just from that simple aspect of just the mindset you need to have because you getting on the court with killers. You can't come out that thing just because it's not an official game that you can, you know, slack. Certain people can because they just like that. 
Right. So even when they not going a hundred percent, they still better than a lot of people's hundred. Yeah. But man, yep. it's, it's, the summers in Chicago, man, it's um, it's definitely an eye opener. It just made it, it made me lock in on what I needed to get better at as far as a player, and then it just I don't I don't think I've had been in a situation where I was like exposed. Because I don't think I've guarded anybody who just dominated me. on, And if they, they scored on me, I was always able to go back and score on them and right, some right. aspects or throughout the game. But it's just the, the physical differences as far as strength, as far as athleticism, mm-hmm. um, the skill, the I main footwork is, is Impeccable, crazy. man. Impeccable. Man, it's, it's, and, it's, and, and then you just, just talking to them, you learn how to just separate yourself, understanding that, how footwork is important, how IQ plays a, a major factor. And it's, every, it's nothing that they're telling me is really about athleticism or skill, even though footwork plays a part into skill, but it's like, it's those things that separate you. You know, putting right. in the work, putting in all that is important too. Yeah. Taking care, but taking care of your body, how you eat. Facts. You know, I learned all that. Like another, a big, um, a big influence to my game is um, a guy, he went to HF, Ty Odiasi. I've seen, mm-hmm. I watched him grow from where he was in high school, playing against him all in high school, to how he dominated in college, as far, especially as a defender, to now what he's doing at the pro level. And the biggest thing I take away from him is how he take care of his body. And then after that, it's like his mindset financially, what he does with his money. So, right. you know, I, these are just the things that I learned from being in these the, programs. And these was my right, welcome right. to the pros moment. You right. know, so it wasn't really like a moment of getting exposed, but more so a moment of of learning and and just getting insight on the on the game at the higher level. No, man, that's that's also just just as important too, man. Like you know, a lot of people, you know, they don't they don't have that type of you know they don't have those type of people in their life too. Like sometimes, and I know it can be crazy too, like for a, for a lot of different people, like on a professional level, because there's so many different avenues a person can get caught up in. So, you know, when you're around people like that who are focused, locked in on what they're trying to do and what they're trying to accomplish, I already know that. I know that help a lot, man, because it's. I, I like to say that just on on multiple levels that um that helps. So, you know that that's what's up. That's dope, man. And also too, so I, another thing I wanted to touch on too, man. Uh, was like playing overseas. What was what's what's probably the best league overseas? Because I didn't really know until recently that there was so many different leagues uh, so overseas. Many. So what would you say is like probably the the best league overseas to play in? Or Euro from your experience, is, that you you, have. Ask, you uh, Euro League is the best. You ask anybody that play overseas, they're gonna tell you that it's that's the closest thing to the NBA. The Euro League is better than the G League. Mm. It's literally the closest thing to the NBA because that's where you have the most ex NBA players, you have the most NBA talent. Right, you, right. That's 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 it. Like the the if, salaries are great. If you know the a few, are beautiful. If you know a few, give us give us a few so we can put it in perspective. Some of the players that's like over there that might be notable. <clears throat> and they ain't got to be like playing now, but like you know, for say, because like you said, a lot of ex stars go over there uh, from the NBA because I know like. Some guys they might go away and, and they'll be playing Euro League, but because there's so many different leagues overseas, people kind of just categorize that. Oh, he's overseas. He's overseas playing. Okay, so if you, when you look at, we could just let's talk about the foreign players that play. So you look at like a Timothy, a Timothy Miles guy. Mm. You look at, or you can even look at guys like Luca. Guys like they was Euro Martin League. Ginobili. These people like they were playing in the Euro League. Luca right, okay. won, and I didn't even realize this until I got overseas. Mm-hmm. Luca won Euro League MVP at the age of 16 years old. That boy is an animal, man. And and, and when I got over here, I realized the best players that aren't in the NBA are in the Euro League. So for you to be the MVP of that league at 16, it says something is, is ridiculous. Yeah, that but is yeah, crazy. You, so you just you just got you got like the guy, especially the foreign guys. They come home and they play with the top teams in their country. So you got like Timothy Mozgov. He would come home and play in the Euro League. You right. got um. So is the uh, the man, thing? What's my, what's my man Gian, name? With Giannis uh, and all of them, are they in Euro League now? That's that's the one that it is, or is that something else? So what's going on right now is is um it's just FIBA qualifiers. So these are so these countries are trying to qualify for the Olympics or trying to qualify for the World Cup. Right. So what's okay. going on right now is these teams are trying. If they win, they win this. They team because every team, all every country doesn't make the Olympics. 
Right. Okay. You know, I got so, you. So you got to go through qualifiers and all that. So what's going on right? That's what's going on right now. That makes but so sense. the Euro okay. League, the Euro League is. Euro League is a, so right now I play in the Kosovo Super League, which is the top division in Kosovo. Right. And then another league we play in. We I'm playing in three leagues this year. So one league is Euro League. I mean not Euro League. One league is the Kosovo Super League. The next league is called the Un, the Unic League, which is just teams from Kosovo, some teams from Albania, some teams from uh, Montenegro. There's teams in this this area. Mm. They play in a it's just a league. And then we play in another league called the Balkan League. Balkan League is probably going to be the best league we play in this year. So we got a team, um, a team from Ukraine, but they moved to Rome because of the war. But the team, mm. um, one of the best teams in the Ukraine, they moved their team to Rome, so they playing in the Balkan League. And then you got, um, it's three teams from Israel, they play in the Balkan League. You got two teams from Kosovo in the Balkan League. You got so the Balkan League is made up of teams from a bunch of different countries. Right, right. No, that, I got and that's kind of. And that's kind of what the Euro League is, but the Euro League is the best teams in their country play in the Euro League. They also play in their so let's say let's say we played in the Euro League. We will also play in Kosovo League, but, but also we Euro compete League in the Euro. League. So it's like you play in uh, your your country's league, but you also play. So you got the Euro League, and then after the Euro League, you got um, Euro Cup. Mm. Which is the league right below Euro League, and then after that is you got like the Champions League. So it's got, a lot of basketball continuously. Yeah, just going yeah. and so going down. And then you got Spain. Spain's league is a very good league. France has their top league is a very good league. Yeah. And you have like if you play in Spain's second league, Spain's second league is better than a, a lot of countries' first league. Mm. So it just it it, it that's what's up, it, man. It's, it's, it's a, a lot, lot of it's, basketball. It's a, that's what yeah, it sounds like. Lot, it's a lot of basketball, but at the top, it's it's the Euro League that's starting it all off, and that's that's oh, yeah, keeping it Euro all legit. Is, that's what like, and and it, but it also depends on what you want out of this. If you want that NBA feel, if you want to compete at the highest level and make the most money you can, Euro League is where you want to go. But if you just want to make because you got like Jimmy for that, he had mm-hmm. he has excuse me, he has a skill to play in the Euro League, but Jimmy for that went to. Went over to the to Asia and Japan and stuff because he want to go somewhere where they're gonna give him millions of dollars. He can average seventy points a game. <laughs> and yeah. Because in the Euro League, Euro League, the leading scorer, like uh, Mike James, was first team All Euro League. He averaged fifteen points a game. You're mm. not gonna find so many people go to the Euro League and put up twenty a game. Is that's the kind of basketball it is? Right, different type of style of basketball that they play. Exactly. You're going to have players in the Euro League that average 10 points and six rebounds, but they make $36,000 a month tax free. Mm. You see what I'm saying? But Man. but if you go to if you go to Japan, if they bring you over to Japan, oh, if you don't have 40 and 25 every game, we're not giving you this $30,000 a month. Right. So you see what I'm saying? They're going to give you the money. The basketball isn't going to be as competitive and as hard, but the expectations are going to be a lot higher. Right, because yeah, they expect you to they come want, out there. They and want you to be a superstar. That's why Jimmy Fredette, you got Jimmy Fredette go there and he had a game where he had, I think he had 78 points. Yeah, I think Russ I might have seen it. I think I think Russ Smith was over there before and he had like 67 points. Like people go over there and put up crazy numbers and they're getting paid crazy as well. And they can compete in the Euro League. It's just the Euro League is tougher on the body. It's tougher. The coaches are the coaches are tougher. It's just it's a it's higher just competitive a level. It seems yeah, like it's, it's a nah, lot harder. That makes it's sense. A lot harder. Man, so yeah, it's about that's what crazy. You're looking for. That's it's crazy, what you're man. Looking for, for real. Damn, that's what's up, though. That's dope, man. But look, man, last question here. This is the last question of the episode, man. If there is one person you could bring on on the show and that you would want to listen to on the show, who would it be? Ah, that's a good one. Um, and you got to help me get them, too. You, know, you can't say... Sure, sure. <laughs> can't be for like sure. LeBron. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but somebody we can um, get on here. It has to be with sports or just in general? Uh, let's make it sports. Let's make it sports. Okay. Um, like I said, the Denar Bros, that'd be great to have on here, or or Ty Odias would be great to have on here because he he's uh he doing he doing amazing, man. He's uh extremely proud of Ty, man. He, just because I seen 
I seen where he went. I watched him go through his injuries. I watched him mm. battle through it. So now he's playing in the Euro Cup. And oh, that's what's up. If, and he's going to be a Euro League player if he doesn't get an opportunity for the NBA. Because if he gets the opportunity for the NBA, how he plays, I believe the right opportunity, he'll stick in the NBA. But that's like that for really a lot of people. And that's another mm. thing I learned from playing in these pro runs. It's not that these guys are necessarily better than – they're not better than overseas players. It's just they got the opportunity and they took advantage of it. So they're very right, deserving right. of their of what they have. But it's like if I got an opportunity that some of these people got and I took it – I usually have to take advantage of the opportunity. And that's what a lot of people in the league did. So that's mm-hmm. why uh, – if I can clear that narrative that if you play overseas – but yeah, people, that's so I mean, I don't, false. I don't think I don't that's think so athletes, false, man. Yeah, it, I don't think people, athletes think this, but for just the outside people, the fans. Don't think, yeah, yeah, don't it's, think it's a lot of the fans. Somebody play over, yeah, don't think just because somebody play overseas, they're not better than. And I'm not even gonna it's, say not. Man, it's still professional. Don't think that they're not better than people in the NBA. Because man, some people they're it's overseas players that are ten times better than some NBA players. That's fact. They just NBA players got the right opportunity. And so I feel like they, NBA has NBA a lot of politics. I feel like NBA oh, man, has a lot crazy. of politics in it too, more so yeah. than like the overseas do. And because of that, like there are different guys who like, you know, they, I always say it's a difference. I, I'm going to sum this up real quick too, because I know we got to wrap up, but I'm, like, I, I think it's a, a huge difference into like hoop guys, hooper type guys, and then like the basketball player. When certain guys are just like hoop guys, that's all they want to do. It's just hoop. Like they don't give yeah. a damn about trying to talk to media. Take they don't really body Yeah, they, they, they don't, just yeah. they just hoop. That's wanna that's go to the pickup run. And hoop. And I feel like it's a lot of those guys overseas and a lot of those guys out here in general will give many many NBA players hell. They will give them buckets. Because those guys don't play around. And it's like when people compare and they say, oh, well, these overseas guys, they're not, they're not as good as the NBA. It's, you got to think of all the different politics that go into the NBA. The NBA right. is going to overhype you no matter if you're that guy or not. Like they're going to, they're going to, exactly. because they're trying to sell something. Overseas, exactly. they not, I don't, I, at least from my perspective of overseas, uh, they're not really trying to sell something like the NBA is trying to sell something. So I don't know that. I feel like that has a lot to do with it, but definitely, bro. People forget overseas basketball is still professional basketball. Like exactly. it's, people will be forgetting that, man. They got to hoop though. I, I think that's just what it comes down to. People got to come exactly. in and hoop um, because when you when you you, you got you just got to hoop. You got to hoop and you got to watch it because you just don't know. You, you just don't know exactly. until you see it and see that skill, the difference in the skill, man. <laughs> it's just that simple. But, hey, you, so you said Ty and the Denar bros. We got to get them up here. Exactly. I'll do my part. I'll hit them up. Bet. I, um, hey, I'm, I'm on it. Make, see if we can make something happen. Bet. We going to get it into play, man. But, hey. I greatly appreciate you coming on, man. I enjoyed the conversation. Glad we got a chance to kick it, talk basketball, talk about your experience as well, man. So anything else you want to leave the people with before we out of here? Man, y'all just take care of yourselves, man. Stay out the way. Stay safe. You know, keep God first, man. And just, you know, love your, love your people, man. I feel like we in a day and age, man, where loving people is a bad thing. Mm. Ain't nothing wrong with, with loving people, man. If you got a girl, love her. If you got a man, love her. Love him. Love your family. Love your friends. You know, just stay to yourself. Stay out the way and just, you know, love on your people, man. That's what's that's what important. If there's more love and there's less craziness, and then we can go back to, you know, having fun and just living life. That's facts, man. That's facts. Drop the socials for us, man. Let's hear it. Man, Instagram, Tay Deuce, T A Y D E U C E underscore. Twitter, same thing, T A Y D E U C E underscore. Tay Deuce on, you know, Instagram, Tay Deuce on, on Twitter. And I think it's Tay Deuce on TikTok. You know, especially because if you want to see me cooking, man, I love to cook. That's why That's I do most of my cooking there. It's Tay Deuce. There's no underscores. It's Tay Deuce in the number two on TikTok. But yeah, man, that's why I be at. Um, looking forward to this season, man. I feel really good about it. I feel like God has something special lined up for me. 
and I can't wait to, you know, you know, see what that is. So, yeah, man, I appreciate you for having me on here. Hey, man, ain't no problem. Having me on here. Glad to have you, man. Glad to have you. But look, man, y'all know where y'all can find me on Instagram at the Run Podcast. Be sure to follow my personal page as well at I am Manny Wilson. And from then, man, we will be back later on this week. And so on and so on and so on.